Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and this is the second episode of Crystals of the Zodiac. Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius. But today we are focusing on Aquarius. So, if you want to find out exactly how this looks in Glorious Technicolor, which stone or crystal we are talking about today, which palette has been used to achieve this look, and a little bit more about what the stone or crystal itself represents, then my friend, you, you have the best seed in the house. As I have frequently said, and oft echoed, a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro, which clearly I haven't filmed yet. Um, I would have told you in the intro that this is the second in the edition of... Bum, ba, 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 ba crystals of the zodiac. Uh, we are doing Aquarius, which is of course the amethyst. And because I've not had a chance to try this yet, I've been lusting after this since it launched. This is the Smashbox Cover Shot Ultimate Violet Eye Palette, which looks like that. And the majority of amethysts are this shade. However, if you have a smaller stone, it can look more like this. Yes, I have short nails at the moment. Uh, they had grown out significantly. My nails have always been paper thin. That's why I've always had them acrylic. Um, but it's normally my natural nail, just with acrylic on top to strengthen it. There's not tips on it. But they'd grown out so far from obviously everything being because I had my nails done about a week and a half before the lockdown was announced um, this is now like the middle of week three so you're talking four weeks of growth which I normally go back every sort of three weeks to get them done um, and this time round they were due for a soak off and a new set because well, if you look how thick the acrylic is on my nail there. You can see why. Um, so because I could feel the acrylic starting to pull on this thumbnail, I thought, right, okay, I'm just going to trim them all down, uh, file them as best I can to minimise the ridge from the grow out, uh, and then paint them, um, just so that they don't look too horrific and because I had an issue about mm, 18 months ago where I had one lift because I couldn't get into the nail girl I was seeing at the time and it literally pulled my natural nail off of my nail bed that was fun you'll see the films from then because I had like a finger cot on one of those like finger condom things anyway that's why the nails are looking a bit janky compared to normal and it's very weird for me because I've not had short nails like this for about seven years now. Anyway, 
this is the palette that I'm going to use for the Amethyst, which of course is actually the birthstone for February. But because the star signs overlap from one month to the next, I'm going by what the star sign is on the first of the month. First of February star sign is Aquarius. And if you look through, most people will say that that the amethyst is Aquarius's birthstone, even for those born in January. If you are a January Aquarius, check out the Capricorn one and find out exactly which flowers well, which gems could also apply to you? It's because I'm doing purple, I'm thinking flowers. <laughs> anyway, um, this is still a teaching channel, so I will still be going at a speed that beginners can keep up with. Uh, if you find that too slow, there's a speed widget up there somewhere, feel free to use it. Um, I'm about to insert, I've, I've mentioned um, the difference between deep set and hooded eyes from very, very early on in my channel and I've been going two years now. Um, I started, I think, February 2018, it's now April 2020, so I've been going over two years and probably for a good part of of that time I've been mentioning the difference between hooded and deep set eyes. I have deep set eyes. Um, I used to think they were hooded because they have similar issues to people with hooded lids. As soon as I realised from doing my research and from reading an awful lot because what else are you going to do at half two in the morning when you've got to pay insomnia to try and stop yourself from buying stuff you read things. Um, and then I, I realised the difference between the different types of eyes. I've always mentioned that ever since because the workarounds for the different type of eye are very different. So I'm about to insert a clip where I talk you through that. If you've not seen my films before, the clip is very up close and personal. When I say I zoom in, I don't mean like most people, I zoom in but so that you can still see the whole head. I zoom in tight on my eyes so you can see what I'm doing, you can see what I'm explaining. Okay, so please don't scream, it is going to be very up close and personal. Um, I've noticed a lot of people are now starting to talk about the difference between hooded and deep set eyes. Um, I hear them parroting my phrases quite a bit. Not entirely sure they actually understand what they're saying though. Um, because I know how much research I did to make sure I was giving you correct information. Anyway, here's the clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%, and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer and then I buff it over mm. with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes 
So I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. And I am back. Hello. Right. Um, I'm going to be starting off with some of my Royal and Landnickel Chic Pro brushes today. Uh, I'm going to start off with the crease brush. Uh, these are some of the brushes that I recommend in my which brushes do I recommend film which should be linked in the description box um, these are extremely high quality but at the time that I bought them they were two quid each so if you're looking if you're if you're into your makeup now and you're looking for something a little bit higher quality in terms of brush wise I would absolutely recommend the Chic Pro range from Royal and Magnacle. They are some of the softest brushes I've used. Um, these and the Blush Tribe brushes are the softest ones I've used. Unfortunately, Blush Tribe is closing down, which I'm absolutely gutted about. Anyway, right, I'm going to start popping some of these colours onto my eyes. I'm going to start off with Violet Vibes. So, as always, I hold the brush right at the very end to put as little pressure on the eye as possible. Load the brush up and I'm going to start from the outer corner because if you do get a sudden dollop of pigment, it's much easier to blend it out if you're on the outside edge than if you're over by your nose. I'm going to start about here and circular movements. And I would much rather tap the pigment off of the brush like I've done here and slowly build up pigment than suddenly whoomp on with the pigment and have fun and games trying to blend it out. Now the reason that I do circular movements like this, I go this way towards the nose, 
bit of a bounce in the middle and then I reverse the direction to come back out. Now the reason that I do this is because in less than a month I will be 46 years old. I've also lost over 14 stone which is over 200 pounds. So the skin on my eyelids moves. But by very gently doing the circles like this, we're gently moving the skin, making sure we get all of it coated and that we don't get any sort of tiger striping or barcoding. Now I do struggle with my left eye, the one that I'm blind in, because I've got super deep creases just here as you can see. Um, that's from where my eye was pulled around at the ophthalmic hospital when I was a kid, which just shows you. And when I say a kid, I'm talking five years old, so we're talking 41 years ago nearly. Um, so it shows you just how much damage can be caused even at a very early age. But I know slim women in their 20s who have issues with um, eyelids that are less taut. That, that can just be a genetic thing. Um, and uh, you'll find that this will work for most people. I will show you what I do have to do with this eye when I get down to doing the shimmer section or the lid section. I don't know yet if I'm going to put a shimmer on the lid. There are shimmers in this palette though so I might do. I sometimes decide I'm doing an all matte look which can be very striking. If you use um, you know, a matte foundation, matte eye look and then use a glowy blush and a good highlighter, it can look absolutely stunning. So you can see I'm just blending this out, slowly building the colour up. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. How are you at the start of your day? You watch me over your breakfast. Right, I normally would clean the brush off, but I'm about to go into a deeper colour in the same family. So, I'm not changing colours, I'm just changing depth of colour. So, I'm now going to go into... <sighs> Lavender. And I say it like that because of how it's written. Yeah, I'd lusted after this palette for some time. If you go back to one of my Hell Yeah, Woe well Knows, you will see that I was like, oh, I want this palette. Um, but for the quality of Smash, Smashbox palettes, I don't like paying the price they ask for them. Don't get me wrong, they're nice enough shadows. But not at the price Smashbox want you to buy them for. So I was patient and I waited and I waited and I waited. And eventually I spotted this at half price. So I snapped it up. And I left it in its box because it tells me that I've not filmed with it yet. It's just a reminder to myself. Because there are some palettes that I've bought that I've not filmed with. Um, I've used them, but I've not filmed with them. Um, some of them I've bought and I've not used because I want to do the first impression of what they're like on screen. And purples are the most difficult colours to create. But this is actually blending out not too badly. It's kind of blending away a little bit over here. But I do struggle just here with very very dry almost like eczema on the edges of my eyes which can when you're blending blend the colour away if you get that issue blend out the edges to how you want them you 
Okay, and then pick up some pigment on the brush. Very gently, just pat it into place and tap to blend. Okay. Tap to blend. And then you can build your colour up. Uh, in the outro I will be telling you more about Amethyst but I like to keep the middle part of the film about makeup and how to apply it because as I said I am a teaching channel it's something that I felt was missing when I first started to get really into makeup. Um, I, I'd look at some of these tutorials and they were all 20 year olds with perfectly firm skin. No saggy, droopy bits, no, no age spots coming out, you know, no dark circles. Perfect lips with no creases in them because they've got them pumped up to high heaven. And I just thought, where are the tutorials for people in their 30s or 40s who want to learn more about makeup, want to start using colour where perhaps they've mainly just done neutrals because I was always neutral eye, bold lip. I was known for bright red lipstick. So I just used to use a brown or a grey on my lips. But then I thought there's so many beautiful colours out there. But I wanted to try experimenting with colour on my lids as well. And trying to find tutorials where they would show you doing both eyes rather than just one and then doing the other off camera, because it's all very well doing that. But if you're a beginner, you've then got to rewind it and do it in mirror image when you're following along, which, you know, is not always that easy. And, um, you know, they'd, they'd cut an awful lot of the blending out as well, and you just think, They've stopped blending and then they'd sort of like jump cut to the next colour and you think their eyeshadow is so much more blended. How much longer did they blend for? You know? I'm just going to clean this brush off on a microfiber cloth. I used to use a colour switch but I find they're far too harsh on your brushes. Um, especially if you've got um, natural hair brushes. These are synthetic. But colour switches are brutal to good quality brushes I tell you. Right, sticking with my Royal and Lane Nickel Chic Pro, I'm going down to what they call their eyeshadow brush. This is a more tapered blending brush. The one I've just used was circular. This one is more oval because I want to control the colour and keep it more here than blend it further up the eye. And I'm going to go in with, I think, Regalize it, which is this uh, indigo bluey purple. I don't really want to go down the red route of purples because this has like a blue side and a red side. Um, I've seen indigo toned amethysts, I've not seen ruby toned or raspberry toned amethysts. They could exist. But I've not seen them. So, just got colour on the tips of the bristles. And I'm going to concentrate just on the outer half here. I'm not going to go right the way along the lid like I did with the last colour. I'm just going to concentrate on this outer edge here. And really try and keep it quite close to my natural crease so it looks more like a shadow. 
just want to blend that out slightly, just soften the edge. The way I'm doing that, I put it on this way and I'm tilting it 45 degrees to do the blend. And when I'm blending, I'm not adding any more pigment to the brush. So this way you're gently buffing the edges out without taking it too high up the eye. Uh, I try to avoid talking about the Lager Lurgy because I'm aware that, you know, a lot of people just, they're not coping well with how it feels. I and mean, for me there's not a huge amount of difference. Being disabled and being stuck at home all day, not being able to go anywhere until, you know, your, your other half's there to help you in and out of the car, for example. Um, that's kind of my life. I have seen some knock-on effect because whereas before the postie would, you know, have a chat with me for a couple of minutes or the woman delivering my message would have a chat with me. Now it's like you not you open the front door, there's a parcel on the door and they're half like the drive going, morning! Um, so I am finding that a bit difficult, the, the lack of human contact during the week until hubby gets in from work, you know, he's on, he's on the essential list because he works at a hardware store um, and they've taken sort of non-essential items off of the list of things you can order, they're not allowing any customers in store. You can only do like click and collect orders. I always get more fallout this side because this side moves more because it was pulled around significantly more as a kid. Um, yeah, his class is essential, but thankfully they're not allowing customers in store since the lockdown. They have to turn up to pick up their online order and stand behind a barrier and the staff bring it out and go back in and then they can come and get their um, their order and uh, makes it feel a little bit safer but then he's also dealing with truck drivers from all over the world that are delivering, you know, all over the UK that are delivering stuff um, but he is on his forklift most of the time and he's got gloves on all day and he disinfects pretty much everything when he walks through the door, including his boots and his coat and his gloves and everything. We've got a spray bottle with Zoflora mixed up. We've also got a Dettol and uh, antibacterial, antiviral spray thing, antiseptic, whatever you want to call it. And he has the Dettol on his boots and then he uses the Zoflora on his coat and gloves and everything. And he's determined to keep me safe because of, uh, I got pneumonia about three years ago on my birthday as it happens. Um, very nearly didn't pull through that one. That was, I'm not going to lie, that was a scary time in my life. But, I made it, I'm here. I'm annoying you by waffling away when I should be putting makeup on. <laughs> right, I'm going to go in with the Morphe M321. And I'm going to go in to Aubergine, which is not an Aubergine colour at all. It's, it's that one. See, that's more of an Aubergine, or even that, but this is more of a violet or a lavender. Anyway. I shall coat the brush with pigment because you never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush ever. That's how you kill your pigments. And I'm gonna spray this with the still this is still going. This shows you how much you get in one of these slay all days. Um, I normally use a cheaper 
spray to dampen pigments. But for some reason, the jasmine scent, which is the one I've just used, dries my jawline out. Nowhere else, just my jawline. So I keep that for just moistening pigments at the moment. I'm going to pop this. This is more of a satin than a shimmer, so I might go over it with some highlighter in a minute. And then again, I might not, I might leave it as a satin. Because that is actually quite pretty. That's the only problem with these little Smashbox mini ones. The, um, Very often the shimmers in them are not, not all that, you know. I'm just going to use the tip of the bristles just to blend that into the matte shade that I used on the outside there. That's pretty. Dry the brush off. Go back in and reload the pigment on the brush. Now I do have to do this eye differently, as I was saying. Um, I actually have to stretch this lid out, which I usually advise vigorously against doing. But if I don't, what happens is the pigment builds up loosely in these deep creases, and as it dries through the day, it falls into my eye, it falls down my face. So what I do, I very gently stretch out just the part of the lid you can see what I mean about the tiger striping there. That needs stretching out because of the deep creasing. I'm only pulling it out as far as I absolutely need to. I'm not pulling it out to my ear roll. And as soon as I've got that blended on, I'm letting go. Try that brush off, go back in and pop a little bit more pigment on the brush. Just for this bit here. Again, tips of the bristles just to blend it in with the matte pigment. There. That's actually really pretty. Right, I'm going to pause you while I pop some foundation and whatnot on. And I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now I'm going to have to wait for the next time I press record to talk to you. But for you, my darlings, there will be absolutely no day at all. You'll see me instantly. And I am back. I have done purple in my brows using this. Uh, it's my usual soap brow thing that I've been doing recently. Just basically brush them through. I've got the little Revolution soap kit thing, which actually works quite well. It's got like a little mini toothbrush in it. You don't need to use that. You can just get a bar, ordinary bar of household soap and a clean spoolie. You know, like one of these, and just through. And then use the other end, dip it into whichever eyeshadow powder you're using, and instantly your brows match. Now, I used to use pomades, people know this. But um, Revolution have seemed to have stopped stocking them, or stopped stocking the coloured ones, on their um, site. So I don't know if they're stopping doing them completely, or if they're rebranding, remarketing, reformulating. I don't know. Uh, but a lot of people were saying, we really want to do coloured brows, but we can't find it anywhere. Help. So... I tried a number of different ways and the soap, brow and powder works absolutely fine. Going in with my flat top brush and I'll go into 
Oh, I'm such a numpty. I said aubergine it was the light was the lavender one. It's not. That was midnight boo. I'm totally looking at the wrong one on the back of here. I hate when they do that. Why can't they just put the bloody names on the front? I hate that. Right, so I'm actually going to go into midnight boo. Honestly, I do think it was weird that this one was going to be called aubergine, but never mind. And I'm going to run that along under my lower lash line. Now regular viewers will know that um, I've always had very very watery eyes anyway. Fibro makes that worse and hay fever is a thing. And I've got literally like 200 foot of back garden full of trees and shrubs and grass. And then there's about 150, 200 foot of allotments, a railway line, a river, and then some woods. So I'm just, I can't get away from pollen where I am. Um, if I put anything on my actual water line, I really struggle with my eyes streaming. Um, so I prefer to enhance them rather than going on the water line by smoking out underneath instead. So. I am going to use the first shade that I used up here, which is the Lavender, not the Violet Vibes. I am such a numpty. Honestly, I swear this bloody lockdown is, is just making my fibro fog a million times worse. But I just... It's weird, I normally I absolutely love filming and if I'm on a day where I've not got too much palette, oh this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette by the way, flat topped and chunky, super great for blending out lower lash lines, um, you can use smudger brushes or um, blender brushes but this is my personal favourite. Um, yeah, normally, if I'm having a not too bad pain day, I'll try and get a couple of looks filmed. Um, I mean, the last two years I've made sure that I've had at least, because I'm putting up three films a week usually on average. Sometimes you'll get four or five a week, sometimes you'll get two a week, but it averages out to about three a week usually. Um, And I always had like six to nine films backed up, ready to go. So if I was unwell or had internet problems, I could just go on on, my f on the app on my phone and make the film live, you know? Um, I've got to be honest, at the moment I haven't got any films backed up at all. Which is really unusual for me because normally I, I jump at the chance to film, but I, I just... I don't know what it is, but there's just something at the moment that I'm just, I'm just not wanting to do it. Has anybody else got that kind of lethargy about the whole thing? It, it's weird. Right, this is a cheap old lip brush that I bought from eBay about a decade ago. This is the Wet n Wild, I know it's limited edition, but it's the White Raven highlighter they did. You used to have a skull up there, you can just about see the skull still. And it's got this lilac-y shift to it. I'm going to use this just under the tail of my brow here. Now I've got quite a lot of lilac-y shifting highlighters because it's, it's on a pale white base so as Teresa is dead would say, my uncooked chicken face um, and my love of the purple. I've got quite a few, I and mean, I've got my lethal cosmetics one that I've got, I've got a NYX one, I've got a Jeffrey one. <laughs> but I thought I'd give this one a run out because I haven't used it for a little while. and. You know, there's a good chance that other people have picked this up as well. That's what gets me. A lot of people say, oh, I can't use this because it's not. it was limited edition. 
what about the people that actually had that and never see it used? It's just crazy. Um, I like to bring my inner corner down and just blend it in with whatever colours I've run under my lashes because I just find that that finishes my eye shape off nicely, especially when I'm not putting anything in the waterline. Right, my darlings. I am going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to lob some more of this highlighter on various points of my face. Uh, put some mascara on, choose a lipstick, do something with my hair. And I'll be back with the finished look and more details about the amethyst. I am back. Obviously, I used the White Raven which is really popping. Love, love, love. Uh, the mascara I used, I got one of these little um, deluxe samples of the It Superhero Mascara. I thought I'd give that a try. My lippy is the unnamed Oh My Glitter. It kind of, it almost, it almost dries down like a, um, a matte lipstick. But it's more satin because it does still come off on you when you drink something or kiss someone. But it's beautiful. It's the same colour as her matte one called Witchcraft. And I just thought it tied in really nicely with the eyes. So, to my book of ideas. Information about the Amethyst. Uh, while I'm reading this, if long term viewers in the 4F family can please double check you are still subscribed because YouTube are still taking people off the list and uh, once you've done that maybe hit the like button and leave me a little comment just while you're listening that'd be awesome thank you so February stone is the amethyst uh, the amethyst represents stability, peace, sincerity and spirituality. It signifies peace, temperance, serenity and royalty. And wearing this birthstone during the month of February may strengthen relationships, provide courage when needed. As well as symbolising the peace, protection and tranquillity, it also provides an insight on ways to solve problems and is said to increase intelligence and spirituality. And now for the Greek mythology section. Dionysus, god of wine, sent tigers out to kill the first mortal that they saw. A maiden Amethystos was on her way to pay tribute to Artemis. Her life was spared by Artemis who transformed the maiden into a statue of pure crystalline quartz to protect her from the brutal claws. Dionysus wept tears of wine in remorse for his actions at the sight of the beautiful statue and his tears turned or stained the quartz purple. And that is how Amethyst got its name. So, I hope you found that little bit of additional insight helpful or informative or fun or you just enjoyed hearing me pronounce Dionysus and thinking about weeping tears of wine. Right, if you are new to my channel, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you enjoyed it here. If you've made it this far through the film, I'm guessing there must be something about this mad bird that you've enjoyed watching. If you too would like to join the 4F family, which is the nicest family on YouTube, feel free to hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, 
and then ring the notification bell and I don't know how many times YouTube actually asks you at the moment but keep saying yes you want all notifications and hopefully you'll get told about one in every four films that I put up speaking of which there are an awful lot of other films that you can currently peruse on my channel there are a number of different playlists for you to choose from so as I have said for some time now and oft am echoed on less creative channels shall we say grab a drink grab a snack pick a playlist put your feet up and indulge right my darlings as ever all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.